Hi, it's Sarah here from So Sarah Style. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. I've got a few things to fill you in on. I've just got back from an amazing weekend, just sewing with lovely people. And I've also done a little bit of fabric shopping and sewn some items as well. So it's just been perfect. I don't know quite where to start. So I'll start with... Um, the weekend itself, to be honest. Um, one of the, the lovely ladies of the group, Katie, who is whatever Katie sews on Instagram, booked a cottage in um, the Peak District, uh, a place called Thurclough. I'll put all the details down below. And it is a sort of a, a retreat place for different crafting retreats. Um, they run retreats themselves, but you can, so you can go along, you don't have to know anyone, you can go along and, and just join in. Or as as we did, um, we had a group of 10, so we booked the whole place for the weekend. So from the Friday night to the Monday, um, we all descended on the place and basically just had an amazing time chatting and laughing, sewing. We just had we just had the best weekend. The food was incredible, so it was fully catered. Just the most beautiful food, really. It was a huge part of it for us. Um, and then, obviously, as many teas and coffees as we could make, we all took snacks, even though snacks were provided. So we all had a you know a constant cups of tea and coffee by our sewing machines. We got there, as I say, on on the Friday, and somebody said. I think I'm going to start sewing. So we all started sewing on Friday night. I think we probably sewed till about, I don't know, nine, ten o'clock at night. I can't quite remember, um, which was brilliant. And um, and then con continued sewing throughout the weekend. I'd, we'd all said, oh, we can't imagine that there's going to be much sewing done. But um, but actually there was, um, there was, you know, there were loads of makes. Um, I couldn't quite believe. I thought I was a you know, sort of fairly quick sewer. But I'm there's nothing compared to uh, to some of the to some of the girls that they came out with, I don't know, five, six garments. It was it was amazing. Um hop along and have a look at the other vlogs. I know that um that a lot of the other vloggers will be will be coming up with their own um take on on the weekend so i'll go back a little bit now before i sort of plod on with what i was making on the um on the day i'll go back in time to friday because katie who'd booked the retreat um lives in hertfordshire and she'd said that she wanted to stop off in birmingham she'd been to the rag market before but she'd never been to barry's so um i said right okay we'll come up come over as I said, leave your car at mine and we'll go in on the train. So that's exactly what we did. We started off in the rag market um, and then we headed over to Barry's. We didn't have long, but we still managed to do a little bit of shopping. I'd got my eye already on, I'd watched um, Christine of the Gemini Stitches vlog and she'd been to the rag market um, a couple of weeks ago and found a, re a couple of really lovely fabrics and I thought right I'm having I'm having some of those while I get when I go the first one that caught my eye that she had was this which is um I, I just I just thought again it's just really unusual isn't it so I love the teals and the oranges I don't really know what the pattern is I would say it was abstract there are some slight florally bits and a bit like sort of tree trunks and things and organic I don't know shapes it's just the kind of thing that I like so I saw that and I got the last three meters that were on the roll which was uh, which was good to be honest I want to make the Tamarama set by Swim Style Patterns and I think hopefully I can get it out of three meters four would have been more comfortable but he only had three so that one had to do when um that was that was the only that was the only um stall actually to be honest that was inside there wasn't a huge amount left at all inside but um katie and i we both live a rummage and so it wasn't long before we found ourselves outside the rag market which is where you, the real bargains are to be found so this is where the 50p fabrics are and there were quite a few obviously i am i'm being quite careful as as to what I'm buying, as you know, but I was looking for things in my new colours, as it were. So um, I did find this, which is um, a drapey, um, what is it? It's like a silky, slinky jersey, and it was 50p a metre. So I said, I'd, I'd like three metres, please. And he said, there's only five metres left on the roll. So I've got five metres of this, which I think will be good. I want to make some sort of dress, as you can see how beautifully it drapes. So I'm looking for a dress pattern that's got lots of movement. It's really quite heavy as well, that I can make a sort of spring, summertime. I just really like that coral colour. So that was um, 
two pounds fifty for five meters i mean it's just crazy really isn't it and then the other one i found it's a bit more unusual um again i don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera and i'm trying to look at this now just to make sure it's not upside down when i show it to you uh, i think it might be it's a mesh so i'm really not usually into mesh but um I just love the pattern on this and thought well there are, there are endless possibilities of what you can make with it can you see that no probably not hang on just let me just let me hold up another fabric behind it so if i show you that can you see that it's got it's got sort of um yeah doors and bits of i don't know really ripped it, it's kind of a bit like morocco or the sahara or something like that it's a bit deserty obviously love the colours and um it is quite sheer so but i can use the fabric that i've shown that i've just shown you behind to to put underneath it i did think that i would quite like to make a wilder gown out of it because i quite like the sheer wilder gowns but it's got it does have a bit more um lengthwise stretch than i would have liked for that um alternatively it's going to be, again, a, a drapey sort of top or it could even be a slightly more fitted dress with something underneath. There are loads of possibilities. And again, that's a good, I've got a good few metres of that so I can practice with it. So I hope you can see that properly and get an idea of what it's like, because I think it's, I think it's quite cool. A bit murky, just right up my street, that one. And then, so we went down from the 50p from the 50p rolls, if it couldn't get any cheaper, we then went onto the floor. <laughs> so there's a pile of fabrics on the floor of the rag market. Now this is where the real gems are to be found. If you're happy rummaging, and I do love a rummage, you can find some brilliant ones, some brilliant fabrics. So literally you just pull them out, ask the, the, the guys there how much it is, and um, you just hand over your one, two pounds, whatever it is. So it, I don't know where, what these fabrics are. They must be left over from, you know, the, the ones that they can't sell. But I think I'm in quite a fortunate position in that I quite like the, the darker fabrics that maybe people don't always go for the, the more boring fabrics. But there was a selection. They'd got leopard prints. They'd got all sorts of different things. I think Katie grabbed a couple out of the, um, the heap as well. Um, so the one that I got is, sorry about this, but it's, it's this. And I was just about to say it's, it's interesting. It's the most probably the least interesting fabric that you you've ever seen, but it had a sticker on it. Now this sticker says that it's forty eight percent tensile and forty eight percent umorphil. Now I'm not sure what umorphil is, but um, or whether I've pronounced it correctly. But I have looked it up, and it's basically. It's really interesting because it's made from, if I've got the right umor fill, it's made from fish, <laughs> fish waste. <laughs> it smells fine. But from the, the food industry, obviously we don't eat fish scales, but they can get, they can extract something from the fish scales and make it into fabric. So I think tensile is, if I'm not mistaken, it's a wood, like a wood pulp. So this is made of wood and fish. But it feels absolutely gorgeous. It's a real, as I say, it's a really lovely drape. Um, it's a really soft jersey. Really, it's beautiful quality. It just feels natural. I think that's what I like about it. Um, so obviously it is made from natural products. So that was on the floor of the rag market. It's since had a wash now and it smells gorgeous. So that's ready to be made up in, into something. Now this is, I will put in um, a photo of this is, takes me back to, well, it doesn't take me back at all, but in, um, I've got a Versace sewing pattern, which I've shown before, and I've, I've wanted to make it for quite some time. It's, um, it's taken from his collection from 1981. And if you have a look at these, these are the kind of colours that he used and the kind of drapes um, that he used. So I am tempted to possibly make that. I've got four metres of it to make the top of that up in this and kind of have some sort of little bit of a 1981 type throwback kind of thing in my colours. The other thing that I really want to make, if I've got enough, is um, a Freya t-shirt out of this, a Freya top, because I just think it's going to be really useful. Um, so that's the plan at the minute for that one, my fish, fishy tree fabric. If you could feel it, I wish you could feel it because it's so beautifully, it, 
it really is lovely and soft anyway i think i've waffled on enough about that one so once we've done that we got our bargains off the floor um we then went over to barry's and um i think after all the excitement of the rag market barry seemed a little bit tame so i don't think oh yes i think katie katie did buy one fabric and um i bought again a complete rip off of christine because i just thought her vlog was great she got so many beautiful fabrics it's this the the denim with the rose gold threads through it now um i bought this because i want to make a summer version of this which i will talk about in a minute which is the fiber mood care so that was what that was for and the other thing that i bought was um uh, Adele had asked asked me to pick up some interfacing for her while I was there and it's cotton interfacing now I don't know how much you know about interfacing I don't know a huge amount I think I've used the wrong the wrong interfacing for this which is a real shame it's a little bit stiff and it tends to go I think if you don't use the cotton it tends to go a little bit bobbly it's not too bad at the moment but it hasn't been washed yet so we'll wait and see this is just a co proper cotton interfacing and i think it just behaves itself really nicely in um in garments so i've got some black and some white and we'll see how i'll see how i go i'll let you know how i get on with that so i'm quite looking forward to using that um so that was that was our day yes so we just bought those in barry's and then we needed to literally race back to get the train and um and get back so we could get then get up to the retreat so i've kind of come back on myself now a little bit so when once we get got to the retreat as i say there was amazing amount of sewing um being done so i um cara was my roommate cara from so so mad she's absolutely lovely so that was that was great so um she and i were actually tended to be the last two down to breakfast i think becky and adele who were real early birds had probably done a couple of hours sewing before um before cara and i even emerged but uh, still they they made some amazing stuff um just hop over to their vlogs and have a look but even so i still managed to sew um my solid floor and half of half of my fiber meat care the whole point for me as i said before was that because cara was there i wanted to sew the solid floor dress she's already sewn too and i had a feeling it would be a slightly more involved make and for me it was actually there were a few new techniques um obviously that there's the collar but there's this sort of sideways placket here which um i'm very glad to say is is in a busy fabric because that's quite difficult to get um to get that sewn in and then there's sort of a side seam that comes down into the split um and then there's the the cut the placket and the cuffs um and all the buttons so there was you know all in all it was quite an involved make there is a sew along as well which i was really glad about so i spent most of my time sort of stuck on my phone like this watching the uh, the sew along and then um, sewing it up on the whole as I say it wasn't too bad it was just because it was the first time that I'd sewn it but I was really glad that she was there um, so uh, when we weren't sewing we were just yeah we were sewing eating we went for a little bit of a walk as well um, I, I didn't really know what to expect but it was just such bliss to be able to get up go down have breakfast and you miss all the machines are there and you can just start sewing you haven't got to think about anything else your food's done for you there's you know you, there's no responsibility whatsoever other than to just sew and be in the company of fab people so i would really definitely recommend that you were that you look up the place if you if you're after um, a nice crafting retreat it's just so beautiful it's right on top of the peak district i think it's not far from flash which is um, apparently the highest um village in england if not the the entire uk so literally you do feel like you're on top of the world when you get there the views were stunning um that's obviously when i finished my dress i had to go out and stand on a mountain just to be just to be a part of it really because we'd been sat watching the views for so long i just thought right i'm going to get out there before it starts raining and get my um get my pictures taken by way of celebration so this obviously is the solid floor and this one is the fiber mood care which i started on the um the friday night we got there i was a bit tired and i thought i don't want to start with this one i'm going to start with something simple uh, so i started it as i say and then saturday morning and sunday was spent doing the solid floor so when i got back on monday 
um, because the girls were already there, I did a sort of virtual sewing and a sew along and I FaceTimed them. I was at my machine here, they were at their machines there and I got this one finished. So this, as I say, is the, the Fibre Me Kale, which I've made a few adjustments to. Um, it's got the side seam pockets, which for the, this is a sort of a wearable twirl, but when I make another one, I'll probably change the pockets up a little bit. I'll do another uh, another vlog on that one. It's narrower, I think, than quite a few of them because um, I took a, a chunk in uh, out of the pattern um, down the front um, and I made the back higher. You can see that the, the back V is quite a bit higher. So those are the changes that I made and um, I'm really, really pleased with it. I've made it full length. I've put some photos in and I think it just works really well. Um, you can wear, obviously, this is a bit too low. You need to wear a vest top or something underneath it. But I quite like the, the idea of, of the low V as well. Um, so that's that one. This The solid floor, I will put, I'll put some footage in as well of this one. I am really, really pleased with it. I could probably maybe have sized down a little bit. So it's a bit, it's a little bit big. But I also quite like the fact that it's it's nice and, and roomy and loose because it, it's just really, really comfortable. I think my um, my buttons, my vintage buttons have worked really well. As um, Nadia said, she thought they were quite 80s, which they are actually. So they are probably from the 80s. So those, as I say, vintage buttons that I found in a, in an old button box. That was the trickiest part was the the placket but it's 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 all achievable to be honest if you take your time and use the sew along especially so that's the solid floor dress I'll put the footage in now so you can have a, have a look at me twirling around in it so this is the, the best way I can think I can get um, a, a full length for you just to show you the dress itself it's quite a loose fitting dress and uh, these ties are part of the side which wrap around the back and then tie I think on the side wherever you want really it's got a slit in the front which is really nicely faced and um, it's got interfacing in as well so that works out really nicely I've got it on here with my slippers <laughs> not quite sure really what footwear to wear with it um, it was wellies when I was in Buxton it's slippers here I'm going all out with the glam as I've already said um, we've got the cuffs here and the, uh, the funnel neck with the buttons but it's just what I really like about it is it's just a relaxed dress uh, but it's got it's got shaping so you can as I say you can just take it in with the belt you could probably have it loose I guess if you wanted um, just don't have the ties if you want if you like that kind of sort of a, a more loose style but I think it works really nicely in the viscose so I'm overall really really pleased with it. So I think that's pretty much it from me this week. I just, as I say, I just wanted to fill you in on, on what I'd been up to. It has been a fantastic weekend and thank you to all the girls who, who I shared it with. It was really, really good fun. There will be plenty more to, to look at on their vlogs as well, I'm sure. In the meantime, I will um, catch up with you soon and um, I've got a few more makes in the pipeline, including the Barrel Bomber, which I didn't get a chance to, to start, but um, that's definitely on my list to do. Um, very, very soon. Okay. In the meantime, take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.